Uh, hello, my name is Alita Williams and I am president of the Rotary Club of Chicago. I would like to now convene our 5,673rd meeting. And now with the thought of the day, we have Michael Driscoll. Thank you, Alita. Good afternoon, everyone. For the hmm? <laughs> Sarah, Sarah has taught us how to say it. Okay, yeah. apparently. <laughs> For today's thought of the day, I've been thinking a lot lately about the butterfly effect. I'm sure probably you know about it, but it's the act of then a butterfly flapping its wings on one side of the world will cause a hurricane on the other side of the world one day. Really, it's all about how small events can have down, larger downstream effects in your life. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately because this past weekend I did Chicago Triathlon, which is not something I expected to ever do in my life. But I can go all back the way to a trip I took with some friends who invited me randomly to go hiking one day in 2019. And I got really curious how many steps I was taking on this hike. And I'm a data nerd. I do data engineering. I love counting, counting things. And as a result of that, I spent like weeks researching watches. And eventually I bought a Garmin watch and it was expensive. And I was like, I spent a lot of money on this. I'm going to make use of every single feature it has on there. And what's a triathlon? Because there's a feature on there. So I started researching running and cycling and swimming a little bit more. And then the COVID hit. And all of a sudden now I can't go to the gym anymore. So I started running and biking more. And all of a sudden I have a bunch of biking equipment at home. And then I started, did a triathlon this year, did it last year, and thoroughly enjoyed myself. And all because someone invited me on a hike one day. And I got curious. So I just encourage everyone to think a little bit about things in their lives which brought them to where they are today, maybe who invited you to Rotary one day and now you're all here, and how maybe you can give that opportunity to other people, little things you do, little things you say that might have bigger effects in someone's life one day, and just take that thought home. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. I Think of that often of how one day I ask, what is this thing you say rotary and now I'm president. So, <clears throat> um, well, thank you everyone. We will do our best to get to all of our Zoom questions. Can we please always honor our, everyone's time and keep every, to one question and make your questions succinct. We will take questions at the end of the remarks and we will go around the room. Please wait until the microphone comes to you when you ask questions so everyone on Zoom can hear. And at this time, I invite Eric Kempel up to introduce Josh Braun. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Eric. <laughs> Since we're all doing it, I figured I'd do it too. Thank you. So uh, I think as many of you know, my world is transportation planning and policy, and that world happens to be very closely linked with land use and housing. And so I tend to watch interesting innovations in that space. And so a few months ago, I came across a Cranes article about a company called Connects Modular Construction, which is run by Josh Braun. Uh, and their very interesting approach to tackle affordable housing by reducing essentially the time and cost of residential construction in Chicago. But Josh's background in real estate actually goes all the way back to his grandfather, who was a Chicago real estate attorney and started a family business that has spanned more than 70 years. After graduating from Michigan State, Josh began his career as an analyst for LaSalle Partners in Chicago. Josh then moved into the family business, accruing nearly 25 years of experience in real estate development and management. He's overseen a $25 million plus portfolio of real estate in the Chicago metro area. In 2007, he formed Braun Renovation Management, a design build firm specializing in renovation and remodeling. And then in 2016, Josh decided he wanted to answer a question, as he says on his website, in a city desperately in need of more attainable housing, where the vast majority of residential lots are the exact same size, why is modular housing not being deployed? The answer to that simple question lit a four-year fire of tenacious research, development, design, and implementation that led to the launch of Connects Modular Construction. Please welcome Josh Braun. You did? No. All right. 
Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, again, I'm Josh Braun. <laughs> uh, Eric, thank you for, I didn't even know I had all that information out there about me. Um, well, first off, I just want to take a moment to thank you very much for the invitation. This is uh, super nice. Uh, I haven't, very rare, usually if I'm stuck talking to people, it's usually either investors or clients. So it's nice to actually talk to people who maybe are curious to hear what I have to say. Uh, I also want to take a moment to thank El Rommel, our director of development, and then Den the gentleman running around is Dennis Radke, who's also, he's one of our architects, but he is a freelance photographer and videographer who took all the stuff you'll see, so he's a really talented guy. I also want to take a moment, my wife was kind enough to come here today, and I never get to publicly thank her. So, um, so my wife Stephanie is here, and everyone says when you become an entrepreneur, uh, it's really hard work, but nobody tells you how hard it is for your partner and spouse. So thank you for being here. Um, so uh, just a little background about Connects. Um, so I started uh, Connects with my partner, Paul Tebbin, who's an architect. Uh, we actually started at January 1st of 2020, just the perfect time to start a brand new business. Um, Connects was really started under two, with two founding principles. One was anybody who has the, has the wherewithal to own a home should have the right to have a home. And two, you should be able to do good and make money at the same time. So it was, it was, when we thought about this, it was really about creating a company that was not just about making high quality homes at an attainable price and to really provide a, a product, a high quality product for the end user, but it was really about creating an, an, a, a total ethos system for the environment, including our employees. Uh, my father's originally from Mexico, um, so I'm very proud of that. And uh, we actually, our very first client was the Resurrection Project, which is a Latino based organization here in Chicago. So we did our first home. <clears throat> we did our first home in 2020 with the Resurrection Project. Uh, we did just understand the growth track that Connects has hit. We did one home in 2020, two homes in 21, and we ended up doing 31 homes in 2022. Uh, we went from producing in uh, in September, excuse me, in March of 2022, we went from producing a home in 30 days to producing a home in a week by uh, September of the same year. So we really, uh, we've really done quite a bit of uh, innovation and we're very, we're very proud of that. Um, part of what we've also, as I said, tried to create an ethos system for not only the, the client and the end user, but it's really about our employees as well. So we've, we look at the way that our employee and our business runs. We have, uh, we're 85% Latino. We also have a 80% retention in our employees. So we have 80% of our staff has been with us for more than a year. So as a manufacturing company, that's a huge, that's a huge win, um, which we're very excited about. We we do a lot of things a lot of companies don't typically do. Uh, we have a four day work week, which uh, people seem to be really surprised about. Um, there, so I can. What's really weird about the going from a five day work week to a four day work week? Uh, when we made the switch, our productivity actually went up. Um, we offer uh, we offer a PTO uh, benefits, and all of our employees are full time. I have no part time workers. So it really has given us a really great opportunity to not only hire a whole variety of people, so we have very skilled labor all the way down to very unskilled labor. It also allows us to hire a whole variety of people. So we have men, women, we have ex-convicts, ex we have uh, very, very proud, we have a gentleman who started out making 15 bucks an hour with an ankle bracelet in less than a year. He's now making $22 an hour. He's a team lead, the ankle bracelet's gone. We also helped him take custody, or I shouldn't say take, but help get custody of his child, and he also helps support his family. So these are, it's important, I know you guys all came to hear about Connects and what we do is for building homes, which I promise I'll get to, but I just want to explain that I think we're very proud of the company that we've created and the, and the environment that we have, not just for the end user and the, and the homeowner and the client, but really also for our employees, because I think to me today, um, we're, we're trying to raise, we're in the process of doing a capital raise, and today, it's really interesting to talk to what investors want to hear and i think that that's important i think that it's you can't you can't skip past um not just how good the company is doing but how how well are the employees being treated how well do they seem to like to work and we're very proud of that so um eric could you throw up the the pdf that way that I, so uh now we'll get in kind of the uh the homes right because I'm, I'm sure you guys are all probably much more curious about the homes so um, these are our first, uh, first and third home that we did for um, TRP. This is in the back of the yards. Um, just, well, I got a video, which I'm gonna throw up. So I'm gonna kind of skip past some of the uh, sort of, as my partner likes to say, how the sausage is made. So what, what our product, what makes our product really unique is that we've created a system. 
So a lot of modular, modular home builders, typically they build big, big modules. And I don't like to use this term, but if you think of kind of like the double wide concept, that is typically a typical modular home builder will build a module that's 14, 15, 16 feet wide by 40, 50, 60 feet long. So if you think of like a tractor, like a very, very large tractor trailer. So we took a very different approach. So we are the first modular construction company in the city of Chicago. We were designed out of the gate to be urban infill. So our modules require no wide, no, we have no wide load requirements, no height restrictions. Um, we transport our homes around the city with a pickup truck. So um, when you hear a modular, I'm gonna ask a question to the audience. We'll do this quickly. When you hear a modular home, what, do, what comes to mind? Trailer trash. Trailer trash, fair enough. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. Any, and I haven't, trust me, I've heard worse, so that's okay. Anything else? Nothing? Trailer, all right, fair enough. Usually I get manufactured home too. So, Wasa home, okay. So, so we're not, so modular is definitely not, a, so just to be clear, we're not a trailer. So a trailer is actually a mobile home that has wheels. Uh, Wasa home is a manufactured home. It's a good product, but that is also manufactured as a HUD classification. So modular homes are actually built to the International Building Code standard. So our homes are built to the same standard. In fact, our homes exceed, if anyone here has had the pleasure of building their home, which is its own fun experience, uh, our homes exceed the building code that you guys, if your home is built with, our homes exceed that. So we meet all the snow load, we meet or exceed all snow load, wind load, shear load. We also exceed the insulation code and we are built 100% to Chicago standards. So when we met with the city of Chicago, <clears throat> we're, we like to say that since we can build here, we can build anywhere. So we, we, Chicago did not give us any waivers. They did not give us any, anything special. They said either build the Chicago standards or don't build here. So the cool thing about that is that that means we, we exceed the uh, build, building requirements anywhere in the country. So what we've really tried to do is create a series of standard designs. So instead of offering hundreds of options, which is what a typical modular builder will do, we've really tried to reduce it down to, we have 12 standard SKUs. Um, one of uh, a typical modular builder uh, would have a hundred, and that's not an exaggeration, by the way. So we have uh, basically to kind of go through them quickly because I want to make sure I'm using our time properly. So we kind of developed a ranch home. Um, these are these are renderings. We have I, we have plenty of photos too that Dennis has taken. So a ranch home is really kind of a two bedroom, one bath. <clears throat> it was designed out of the gate to be urban infill and to be attainable. So all the designs are really keep in mind with that concept. Um, these are some, some really new cool renderings that Dennis and, and Paul, who's my partner, they've been working on to kind of just create sort of a, a little bit of a modern take. Um, so our, this is a, a newest design that we haven't deployed one of these yet, but we've had a lot of good inquiries. So a lot of our clients are asking us to provide a attainable uh, cost home be, because the, the, the number one home that we sell is a three bedroom, two bath home. So our standard home, because I'm, I'm sure everyone's curious, so our standard home is, which is this design, is a three bed, two bath, uh, 1700 square foot home. <clears throat> it costs uh, $360,000. So just to, without land. So just to be clear, $360,000, 60,000 of that is just concrete and water. So that's important to keep in mind. So essentially it's, thank you very much. It's essentially $300,000 for the home. So, which we think is without land and without concrete and water, which we think is a pretty good deal. Um, and this, ironically, that this is our number one seller. We've, we've delivered uh, 59 homes in three years and 56 of them have been in, in the last 17 months, just to give you an idea of how quickly we're deploying homes. Um, there we go. So I just went, so I'm gonna jump through a couple. This is kind of cool. Um, this is a new concept that we're gonna be coming out with uh, literally next month. This is a granny flat. <clears throat> We've had several people ask us about this. It's a single family home with a two bedroom, one bath apartment on the ground floor. So anybody who's sort of an old school Chicago resident, these existed all over the city for many, many, many years. And then slowly in, in the late 90s, early 2000s, they were all deconverted to single family homes. So this is a product that we actually feel will get a lot of traction. We have two of them coming out um, next month. Just some other varieties. So you can see it's essentially a, a standard single family above with an apartment below. So the idea is that you can live in the upper units and you rent out the lower units getting some additional income. And then the last product which I'm gonna to jump to, which is at the end, we have a three flat. 
but that's going to skip past that. This is kind of a neat thing that we're working on. So this is our newest concept is a townhome concept. Um, this is literally like the traditional townhome that you see everywhere all over the place. It's really neat because this is a product that we can deploy in the city, in the suburbs, urban, doesn't matter. And it's, it's a very versatile product. So we're actually really excited to get this, get this going. Um, Eric, would you, would you mind switching over to the video? So um, the other, the Dennis put together this really cool video. So there's no sound. So in case you, you're wondering where the sound is or intentionally there's no sound. So um, everyone always wants to know, I wish, I wish I could bring you to our factory because the coolest part about what we do is um, our factory. And that's the part that everyone's always really curious about. So typical modular home builder, um, I guess I don't need this anymore. Typical modular home builder, um, you have to picture this in your mind. Um, you picture this, these massive modules that are typically placed in one place and it's people coming to the module. What we've really created is a system where the modules are built on an assembly line. And on a Monday, the module starts at one end and then by Thursday, the modules at the other end of the line. And so as it moves down the line, it picks up framing, electrical, plumbing, ductwork, insulation, drywall, and so we deliver uh, what we build in our factory is 75% of a structure. So we build we build 75% uh, of the structure in a week. It gets delivered in six hours. It's assembled in um, typically it takes us about a day or two to make all of our structural connections, and then it takes us between 30 and 45 days to finish it once it's on site. So. We are 100% metal framed, so the reason why that's important is um, not that there's anything wrong with wood, but it's a fully recyclable product. We have virtually no waste because the product is uh, it's cut and prepped for us, and there's no mold, no mold, no rot. It's very very stable product. Uh, as you can see, we deliver on the back of a pickup truck, so you can see that's how they're pulled. Um, they weigh in around between 8,500 and 10,000 pounds. Relatively speaking, is that's actually a very light load. Uh, a typical modular builder would need a semi, and we also deliver, you can see the crane in the background, so we deliver with a 35 ton crane. We can go down one way streets, we can go under L tracks, I don't think Dennis got a picture of the L track, um, which is actually pretty cool. So um, it's really neat, it, I want you to know that um, I always say that uh, even if connects, I don't think it will, but even if it flops tomorrow, we've delivered 59 homes to families that need housing, and, and we're really proud of that. Um, we deliver them with uh, Tyvek and Zip systems. Zip is uh, insulated panels. Um, this is a this is a finished. These are all obviously real. None of these are digital. Um, these are three homes we did in the South Shore. Uh, these homes, just so you understand, they're down at 72nd and Ridgeland. Uh, this is the uh, 425 thousand dollars got appraised their appraised value, which is the highest appraisal in the entire neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Um, he also this gentleman also told me that he's very excited because he was originally supposed to sell it and he ended up getting so much money in rent he just kept them um and then this is dennis literally took this video dennis when did you take this video last week last week right saturday all right so this is a home that we did for lawndale christian development corporation uh this is at 1651 south avers um so this is i don't know if you consider that affordable i guess that's good i think these look pretty pretty darn good for being affordable housing um we really we have a really great deal with samsung so it's a fully samsung appliance package um, we're 100% electric, so we're already ahead of the curve on um, building standards. The city's converting to 100% electric. We're already there. Uh, we use a heat pump system by Bosch, which is great. Uh, we exceed, as I said, we already exceed the insulation requirements. Um, we're, uh, this DOE has, um, the Department of Energy has a 45L tax credit system. So that's some very strenuous cr uh, criteria for insulation requirements. And we're working to achieve that. Um, I don't know how much more time I left. I think I got. I think I did pretty good. Uh, so I don't. Uh, if anyone has any questions, happy to answer. Yeah, um, can you make oh. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Really uh, exciting and, <clears throat> and innovative. Um, can you t talk about the um, the lifespan of the homes uh, and is there a warranty like the first couple of years and just you know from a maintenance like what's the upkeep so that's a good question so the homes are built to be they're permanent homes um, we've we obviously started in 2020 so that's the only data I have at the moment although the home that was built in 2020 is it's still standing uh, drove by it the other day uh, <laughs> 
Uh, as far as I'm aware, the, the, I guess I can put it this way, we've had um, in the 59 homes we've deployed, I believe we've had three warranty claims and they've been what I would consider to be uh, being in construction for 25 years. They were be considered at the very, very mild end. They were like super, like someone's like, can you come and adjust the door? You know, the door was loose or something like that. Those were literally all we've had. So back on wood, we've had no, what I would consider to be like major, uh, I think I think modular, I think people immediately hear modular, they immediately assume it shows up in pieces. And so they immediately assume it's made like crap, right? And I think that that's, I wanna be, I will be transparent because I've heard all these things in meetings. And I think that um, because it shows up in pieces doesn't mean that it's not made well. And in fact, uh, what I tell people is picture your home, take a crane, pick it up, move it around, shake it, put it down, pick it up, move it a couple times and find out, imagine what you'd have left with your house. <laughs> and that's, that is literally like what our modules are required. They have to be picked up, transported, moved around, picked up again. We've had multiple situations where we've picked them up and moved them four or five times and they have to remain a rigid box. So you really are dealing with a very highly engineered product. This is a, a very, very over-engineered single family home. So you're, we have one of my partners, a structural engineer, his company builds massive buildings and does very complicated projects. Literally, this is, inter I'm not kidding, this is entertainment for him. Like he likes working with us because of our mission and he thinks this is fun. And so that's, that's, that's what we get to do. We get to play with giant Legos. Right. Thank you. How have the neighborhoods where these houses have been installed, I guess is the word I'd like That's to use, word. how have they reacted? So we've gotten, we've gotten good feedback. Uh, I think that it's, I think it, I'm trying to think of the best way to answer your question. Um, most of the neighbors are very, we've had good reception. Um, I think the funniest, I guess it's more anecdotal because in many cases people will, you'll see, um, you know, Dennis, I'm sure can attest too. like, you'll be at a job site in the morning and it literally is just a slab. And at the end of the day, there's a house and you see people and they're like, right. They don't know what to do with it because they're like, I swear I drove by and there wasn't a house there. And so I think, um, I think people like it because a typical, if you think about it, we deliver a home in six hours. It's typically done between 30 and 60 days. We, 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 our goal is to ensure that we're done within 90 days from the day we start production to the day the home is done. Our goal is 90 days or less. So I think it's well received. I haven't taken a, I guess to be direct, I haven't taken a tour of the, of the neighborhood, but we, it seems to be getting well received and, and the non-for-profit organizations, we work with both non-for-profit and for-profit organizations and um, they keep buying. Um, our largest project that we did uh, was 28 homes in the corner of Harrison Row in Francisco, which is in the East Garfield Park neighborhood. Uh, in February of 2022, that was literally, it was a whole block. It was literally a giant vacant lot with garbage. In March of 22 is 28 homes fully finished. And I think to, to speak even more volumes, the, I drove by there recently, there's three development projects that have popped up around, around it. So to me, that's, that's what's supposed to happen, right? So we're not changing neighborhoods in years, we're changing neighborhoods in months. Oops, got it? Okay, you've got two bankers sitting here. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I love bankers. <laughs> How is the financing arranged on these? Is there a construction loan and then oh. it turns into a mortgage? How do they get appraised? How much, how much time do you have? <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> two, minutes, two minutes. Uh, it's, a, it's to be, to be blunt, it's a, it is a little complicated. Um, the, the financing stack is, is in, in all fairness, it is a little complicated. So if you think of it as three buckets, the first bucket is the offsite construction. The second bucket is the, is the, typical construction and then the third bucket is perm financing so perm financing zero issues uh wind trust old republic first eagle they've all given perm loans for these houses so perm loans no issue no problem uh the construction loan we get a little bit of like we get it we're not sure the off-site construction has been complicated people that i will acknowledge that, that that has been one of the challenges that we're working to solve um, because the typical bank uh, and the banking industry, and I was actually meeting with an investor, potential investor today, the banking, the real estate world is still stuck 25, even 100 years ago. 
and construction has it has not made the effort to kept, keep up with the speed of building. So it is important that we literally, when we first started, we would start the we would start the build, start the foundation, and then we would deliver. Today we build so fast that if my foundation's not done, the house sits. So we actually build faster than it costs, and that's for an entire house. That's not like for a couple of modules. So the banking is is complicated, and so we're we're trying to solve for it. And I'm happy to talk to you afterwards, by the way. <laughs> so <clears throat> obviously this represents a departure from your history in the real estate uh, area, an entirely different kind of, sort of project. Can you can you talk about what inspired you to turn to affordable housing and kind of switch gears? Uh, sure. I think um, so. I'm very lucky. My, my brother's a, a rabbi. And my brother said to me once, so we shall be on this planet to make the world a better place. And uh, when this idea came to Paul and I, um, we felt that this was an opportunity to actually make a difference in the world. And so I really, the, as I started sort of the way we, the two founding principles that, you know, we believe everyone who has the, the, the wherewithal to have a home should have the right to have a home. And you can do, you can do good and make money at the same time. We take those two principles very seriously. And we, we really feel that I, I don't, I don't, I don't uh, apologize for saying I want to make money because I think that's okay, but I also believe that we should also be able to do good at the same time. I don't, I don't think they should be exclusive. And I also take it very seriously that um, it's, we've, it's been very eye-opening. The communities in the last three and a half years, I've been in more communities in this city than any other time in my life. And it is so cool to meet so many different people from so many different groups, so many different nationalities and races and everything, and it's amazing. And that's the best part about doing what we do. And so it's really cool to go and when we're delivering and you talk to a neighbor and the neighbor comes up and they're like, oh my God, they're like, you're delivering a house. And like, they don't, you know, it's like, a, you know, like Amazon, right? And so, uh, you know, so I think, I think that that's, I think what inspired me is just to hopefully leave the plate, the world better than where I found it. You know, it doesn't need to be complicated, I guess. So. All right, last question. <laughs> No, you're fine. Um, you said earlier that this, uh, uh, your approach, you, you sort of do infill, right? You don't, may, maybe buying the block was a little unusual, but you know, you buy a lot or two or three or some number. How do you source the properties that you oh, get? Do you work that's, with like that's the land? That's the beauty, I don't source any property. So the beauty is everything we build is sold already. So we don't, we don't spec build anything. So currently everything we build is sold specifically to a developer. Uh, we are working with at the, at the moment. L and so it's, by the way, when we're done, if you, if you want to ask questions, L can also speak and Dennis as well. Sorry, Dennis, putting you on the spot. Um, but we uh, basically, we're, we're actually working towards creating a program for emerging developers. So we're actually working, there's uh, 25,000 vacant lots in the city of Chicago. 15,000 of them are privately owned, approximately. Uh, we are working on a program to basically target emerging developers. This goes back to the financing uh, question. And basically, if you own a lot, we will help give you a, a house. So your focus then would be primarily in the manufacture of the house and that aspect of it? E, uh, no, which I'm happy, it's going to be, uh, that's a, there's a longer, there's a longer conversation there, which I'm happy to have with you. It's not quite, okay. so we, we, it's, it's a longer conversation, okay. which I'm happy to, to share with you though. Okay. Sit down? Oh. Nope. You don't need that. Nope. Stay right there. Are there any questions on the Zoom? Nope. All right, great. Well, thank you so much, Josh. And um, we want to present you with a wonderful rotary mug and, yeah. and then these great cookies. Um, and they are made by Al's Cookie Mix. He also wanted to do some great things in the community. No, not mine. Um, but um, Alvin Green started a cookie company to help his son, who's autistic, and his friends to have jobs once they aged out of the Chicago public school system. So enjoy the cookies. Order some cookies. There's a discount code. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. For Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, so at this time, we want to 
introduce any of our wonderful guests. Eric, I know you have a guest. Um, yes, he's not a Rotarian, but we're going to guest. Yeah, I'm just. Terry Hendrickson, past president of the, of the Eating Club. Um, he's a wonderful guest. Terry, do you want to say a few words about yourself? Thank you for Happy to be here. Uh, I am in the commercial real estate business and the title <laughs> insurance business. I've been in that a long time, so uh, and I kind of grew up in the residential business in downstate Illinois. So, always uh, both professionally and personally, I've always had a an interest in. in uh, Eric uh, correctly assumed that I would be interested in the topic today. Okay, Marsha, would you like to introduce your guest? <laughs> Uh, so Michael Hang is the uh, newest attorney in our firm. He does uh, he does patent work. So Michael, I don't know if you want to say a few words about yourself. I uh, grew up in the Milwaukee area. Um, come from a Jesuit background, so I'm very much for being a man for others, and so I can uh, appreciate uh, what the Rotary Club is about. So thank you for having me. Okay, and then we have our visiting Rotarians. Ron, visiting Rotarian. I am. I know. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. I'm Ron Broida. I'm past district governor. You may remember me from the good old days, <laughs> the days of glory. Uh, I always try to stop by once in a while to say hi to my friends at the club and keep up the good work. Thank you. Do we have any other visiting Rotarians in the room? Barbara? Hi, I'm Barbara Yocum, and um, I was a past president at the Naperville Sunrise Club, and I'm happy to be here at Rotary One. Thanks. Great. Do we have any other visitors in the room? Do you have any visitors on Zoom? Richard? Okay. All right. Our wonderful announcements. Um, please, coming up is Peace Day on September 18th. Um, it's going to be in Daly Plaza from 11:45 to 1 o'clock. We do have volunteer um, opportunities with that, so if you just go to the Rotary calendar, you're able to sign up for that. Um, next, we have our Illuminati's fundraiser on October 3rd, where you can go and either support myself, Laura, or Sarah to help support our club to raise money for the um, for our wonderful foundation. And with that, every every pizza that we sell or every pizza that we buy that day, Illuminati's is going to write a check to the found to the Rotary Club found rotary one foundation so please come out if you can't come out you can order a pizza as long as you tell me you're with rotary just in case you can't make it out um, we hope for everybody's support um, we have come home zone the zone um, event is back in chicago this year on october 18th through the 22nd it's a great opportunity for our rotarians to learn more about rotary what we do and to be a part of that and and get to meet other people from other Rotary Clubs in our zone, which goes all the way down to Texas, and I believe Wisconsin and Michigan, and it's kind of weird, but it's kind of all over the place. Um, our committee meetings are, are coming up. They're always on the calendar. The first one to come up is our community service on September 7th. We have the membership committee meeting on September 12th, international service committee on the 13th. PR and marketing on September 21st and DEI on September 26th. We would love for anyone who wants to be a part, be a little bit more involved in the club. All of these committees would love to have you. Um, and our job one committee will be starting up soon. So if you want to be a part of helping youth get um, summer internships, they are also be looking for people soon. We have our upcoming meeting. Our next meeting is at the National Public Housing Museum. We'll be at the Public Housing Museum and we will get a tour while we're there. That's on September 5th. Um, Claire Macy is on September 12th. And then we have our club assembly on September 19th. That's a great meeting to learn about all the things all of our committees are doing. They will all present what they've been doing and what's coming up. And that's an awesome way to learn much more about the club and what we do. So at this time, who am I going to call? Laura. Thanks. You have to come up and lead us in the four-way test. Okay. Thanks.
Thank you. <laughs> if everyone could please stand. Okay, so I'm gonna say the number and then you say the phrase. <laughs> No, I don't. I need you to train me. I rely on guests like you. <laughs> First, is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will goodwill better friendships? Fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Fifth, will it be fine? A plus. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. And with that, we adjourn immediately. <laughs> I mean, you're